All right, guys. Uh, so, um, yeah, I had one little problem and it cascaded into a series of problems and I finally resolved it, I think. So uh, that's why I'm doing this. Though. So if you see, we can do um, we can do a dual weld and uh, a dual unequip. If we switch, then it will do them one at a time. So anyway, we can uh, cancel these while they're playing or we can double tap to skip them. And that's when you're pressing the uh, one for the right pistol, two for the left, three for the dual, four for the rifle, and then five for the flashlight. But we can also cycle through these. And by default, the cycling will not have uh, these montages on them. Now, I'm gonna have to do a video breaking down the changes that I've made in the workflow as far as the item handling system. Now this primarily um, primarily affects the AC held object master and the AC slot uh, master, which is a child of the held object master, and then the AC slot manager. So moving forward, uh, we should be able to traverse as much as we need, and then he'll still pull it out, and he'll pull it out immediately. Now, there's one thing to note is that the tail end of these uh, animations right here, uh, they have a uh, somewhat of a, of a settle on the end of them. So if you want to clip that off, then uh, he'll pull the pistols out faster after he gets up. Uh, but you won't have, I guess, as good of a settle whenever you come uh, out of that. So just let that be known. It, it actually won't matter anyway if you start moving immediately after you get up because there's actually a window there where they actually allow you to cancel it. Uh, so if you just start moving when you get to the top, then it automatically cancels out and helps you all those items. So. So also, I want to show you, you can drop these and I'll pick up the left one first. And it puts it in his right hand and it'll still work. And also, now this is the bug that, that I kept trying to fix and it kept causing all kinds of different other bugs. So if I press the back spade or the backlash, uh, right above the enter button. Uh, it'll drop the right holster. That's just for demonstration purposes. If I come over here and I pick up this and I holster a pistol in here, now that's a right-handed pistol. But the pistol on the ground is still currently a right-handed pistol uh, until we pick it up. And then whenever we pick up the holster, it'll update that so that it's a left because that holster got put on the left. And now you'll see it still works. So that was the bug I was trying to fix before because what it was actually doing is it actually wasn't updating uh, the pistol data properly. So that was causing, uh, as you can imagine, a number of issues. And every time I tried to fix it, I would approach it in what I thought was a good way, but it ended up not being so. There was also a bug whenever I would do that, uh, and it would prevent me from, but that was that bug was actually related to the same bug I was just describing to you. So, yeah. All right, so anyway, you should be able to spam these keys all you want, and it shouldn't break it. Uh, and, the, and I'll just go ahead and briefly, I won't go into a detailed overview of this uh, new uh, setup, but I'll do that tomorrow, okay? Uh, I'm pretty burnt out today because that stuff that kept breaking it got my nerves on edge. So, um, so yeah, all the item handling happens right here now. And we're using an enum called item handling state uh, to 
keep track of things. It was either that or I had multiple boolings and it just made more sense to, since I, since I didn't want to be in a dual welding state, if I was in a set, uh, two separate handling state versus a single state and I didn't need three, I didn't want three boolings. So I just went with an enum. And so you'll see all this stuff here, pretty complicated setup. Uh, but at the same time, it also reduces the complexity. It just seems, it may seem more complex, but it isn't. We have that montage canceling right there. And this is our uh, safe exit and our uh, montage interrupt, which calls the safe exit. So, and that cancels out the montage and handles everything appropriately so that whenever we cancel the montage, nothing breaks. That's basically what that's for. And that's also the reason why if we come over here uh, to this graph, you'll see we have these dual equip and dual unequip events now. You can pass the, you can call these with or without a second item and it'll still work. Uh, so let that be known. If it doesn't, if the second item doesn't exist, it'll just treat this as a single item. And also they don't have to be the same I, uh, the same item. So they don't have to be dual welding pistols. You could call this uh, and pass it a flashlight as the second item reference and it'll handle it appropriately. Uh, if there's a montage on both of their data assets, their character data assets, that is the same, then, yeah, so if both of them have that same montage, then it will play the dual welding or dual unwelding. Uh, depending on if they have a dual welding or dual holster. If there's a dual holster, it'll just treat, it'll just uh, do the holster logic. So we don't actually have holstering montages yet, so I haven't thoroughly tested that. I can't promise you that there isn't any bugs in that, like maybe something that I overlooked right here in this logic, uh, but the logic is not complex. If you find a bug, uh, maybe you can send me the animation or maybe in the, whenever I go to do the next update, what I'll probably do is I'll just assign the equip ones as the, the holster ones just to see if it still works or if it breaks. So um, it shouldn't break though, I don't think, but I can't be 100% sure because I haven't tested it. So we have these events here, and I know these are a little confusing, uh, but basically all this, all this data right here, the attach actor, the attach actor socket name and the signed hand and the assigned item, which is the holster and the holster socket name. I should probably call that uh, assigned holster. Um, and then holster socket name. Those all need to be updated and then they, they need to kind of be cleared afterwards as well. Uh, if you don't clear them, it's probably okay as long as you're always updating it whenever they, they get picked up. But that shouldn't really be something you should have to worry about because I've handled all that in here. So you'll notice that this looks quite a bit less complex now. Uh, some of these events are still here, but um, they're just sharing this one event here. And then we have this right here. This is a new function right here, and it allows you to pass in two actors. The first item actor has to be uh, a valid reference, but the second one does not, okay? Um, and it's going to call this and basically what it's going to do is it's going to uh, cache this actor component and if it's not valid if this isn't valid whenever we go to equip then it'll only equip this one but if this one is valid then it'll also equip that 
and it works with this too. If you want to, if you want to uh, pass them in by slot item config or slot configurations, you can do that too. Uh, I'm still using this one right here, um, but I'm using this one for the traversal. So if we come back over here, you'll see that on this one. This isn't it. Yeah, so on the traversal end here, and it looks like I have some leftover stuff. I'll delete that before I push this, so whenever you get this, that won't even be in here. It'll look like this. But yeah, so we're just checking the items in the hand, make sure they're valid. They are then we pass it into here if not we just don't do anything and that takes us over here yeah but anyway guys uh so i'm gonna give this uh, video out to you uh and i will release the video going over the new workflow of the system it's not really hard actually you know what I'll, I'll go ahead and do a brief little uh, rundown on it so let me just cover that real quick if that way you know i don't leave you guys hanging uh so i've organized this a little bit better as well i've done a lot of cleanup in here but if you come over here to the handling right here and you go to the equip in the uh holster you'll see that i have a new uh, like kind of categorization for this stuff right here. Uh, so now it's it's equip.handr, equip.handl, equip.dual. And then if we open up the this right here and we go to one of these montages also, uh, I'll go ahead and cover this part right here. So I talked about uh, uh, chain dependencies. So these are being stored to soft references, which means, well, you can't async load because uh, there's no way of, of creating a soft reference here, but you can still have uh, these assets here. You can still have these assets to soft references. And what that means is that whenever they get chosen by the chooser, then they get block loaded, which means they just suddenly get loaded. And that can cause hitching if you have a lot of data in here. But these montages and animations are fairly small. And so it shouldn't be a problem uh, as far as that's concerned. All this data is just, it's, it's mostly just uh, small uh, bits of data. So, but it adds up over time. So at, at least there's that. If you guys uh, ever have any hitching related to that, let me know. But these choosers, they only get loaded once. Um, and they don't get loaded again until the, the character uh, switches. So until a different character is holding them, that's the only other time it gets changed. So anyway, um, let me see. If I open this up right here, you'll see that we have this right here, and this is the attach hand R, and that's what it needs to be called, attach underscore hand R. And if you come back over, and I have too many windows open, let me just start closing out of some of these. So if you come over here, you'll see these are the notify uh, names that it's going to look for. Attach underscore hand or an attach underscore hand L. So it's going to attach uh, the left hand whenever this one fires, and it's going to attach the right one when this one fires. And it was important for me to do it that way because whenever we're dual equipping, I'll go ahead and show you that. We, uh, in reality, people don't grab things at the same time. So I had these being grabbed at slightly different times. So I have an attach event for each of them. And then that gets handled on the AC held object master. So if we come back over here, you'll see this is 
I'm just checking to see which one it is. Oh, well, it's checking to make sure it's one of those events. If not, it's not going to fire this. So over here, it just checks to see which one it is. If if it matches the one assigned to this, then uh, if it matches the hand assigned to this, then it'll do one or it'll do the other. And that's basically it. So um, yeah, tomorrow I'll do a more in-depth breakdown of all this logic so that you guys can get a better handle on it. Oh yeah, I have this filter. But yeah, these are all the events right here that you can take advantage of. Uh, mostly on task finished is the one that, that fires after both items. If two items are being handled, it only fires after both items have been uh, have finished. Otherwise, if there's only one item, it'll fire after that single item is finished. But yeah, okay. I'll see you guys in the next video.